Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last couple of classes, we started discussions about uh, how to perform CFD simulations for turbulent flows. And we saw that uh, ideally we can use the Navier-Stokes equations that we have derived in the beginning of the course for simulating turbulent flows also. But for realistic situation, the Reynolds number is so high that the separation of the scales is very, very large. And in order to resolve all these scales, you require a grid which is very, very big. Okay. So big that even uh, the modern super supercomputers are not sufficient for simulating those flow fields. So, we resort to other approaches. For example, we can uh, do large eddy simulation that we discussed earlier, which is uh, slightly uh, cheaper than not slightly actually a lot cheaper than doing the direct numerical simulation where we resolve all the scales. In the LES, we learnt that uh, uh, we only resolve the large scales which are responsible for the main dynamical behavior and the small scales which contributes to let us say 20 percent of the energy uh, turbulence energy or the 40 percent of turbulence energy is uh, basically modeled. Okay. And the last approach that we saw is the RANS which is much cheaper than the DNS, much much cheaper than, than DNS and uh, that requires uh, basically invocation of model to uh, uh, account for the effect due to the turbulence. So, we are not resolving any scale there, we are just using turbulence model to do that. Now, in the RANS approach as the name suggests Reynolds average navier stokes equations, we do not solve the navier stokes equations, but we rather solve an averaged equations which is called the Reynolds averaged equations. Okay. And that is why we do not get the instantaneous flow field, we do not get the complete flow field, but we get an average flow field. But that also has a lot of information uh, from an engineering point of view and let us say if you are able to do uh, a mean flow simulation accurately uh, predicting all the main flow features, then it will be very useful for our design. Okay. And because it is uh, much cheaper than DNS, this is the preferred tool in most of the engineering applications. Okay, and engineering design. So, let us start uh, with the derivations of the RANS equations. So, for before we go to the RANS equations, okay, so we will uh, learn about the averaging. right? So, as I told uh, and we have discussed it also, uh, if you recall uh, the flow inside a pipe, okay, we had a pipe like this and this was your mean flow. Okay, uh, we can call it u bar and then on top of that uh, we had this fluctuations okay, which we called as u prime. Right. So, uh, there is an average flow which is u bar okay, and there is a fluctuation sitting on top of that. So, in the RANS we solve for this average flow okay, and the fluctuations uh, the effect of fluctuations are incorporated using a turbulence model. If you are solving for this average equation, uh, average uh, u bar or v bar or w bar or p bar or even uh, the mean density or mean temperature rho bar t bar, we need an equation for that. right? So, we will derive that equation, those equations are called the Ranch equations. We will do it for uh, first the incompressible flow because that is lot easier than the very complicated compressible flow. Okay. So, before uh, we derive the equation, we need to define what is this average quantity u bar is. So, it seems you can define it in many ways. Okay. So, one is given here which is called the classical time averaging. Okay. So, basically uh, if you want to get this mean x, okay, so that will be uh, basically limit t tends to infinity ideally t 1 by t, t 0 to t 0 plus t u x t. Okay. Uh, of course, we do not get it to infinity, uh, we basically uh, uh, do it for a reasonable time, so that we get a good average. So, this is a kind of average where you are uh, doing it for a very, very long time okay, and keep on uh, adding uh, the values for a very long time and then uh, divide by the uh, number of time steps okay, or the total time uh, in which you have taken the average and that gives you the uh, the time average. So, you can see that the time dependence has been removed. Now, it is u bar is just a 
function of x right and uh, here it is function of both x and t right. So, this is called the time average or uh, this is also called the Reynolds average due to same Reynolds uh, Osborne Reynolds ok. okay. Uh, in experiments of course, uh, in many time what you do you do something called ensemble averaging. So, if I can represent it uh, let us say by tilde. So, that will be like limit n tends to infinity 1 by n uh, 0 to n maybe and this is u x ok. So, what we are saying that you conduct the experiment for many many times. So, n is basically number of realization this is the number of realization. So, you conduct the experiment many many time okay, and take the average of those experiments and then divide by the number of realizations right. So, that will give you a statistical average. So, of course, you cannot do it is not possible to do it uh, uh, many many times to conduct the experiment right. So, uh, of course, n does never goes to infinity, but you can assume for a reasonable time frame. You can also discuss something called spatial averaging in the same spirit. Okay, so, that if I represent let us say what is maybe u hat x. Okay, so, this is basically limit and let us say gamma is representing your uh, your uh, 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 space. Okay, it can be uh, in any 2 d or 3 d or 1 d wherever you want to average it. Okay, and then this is 1 by gamma i 0 to and u x gamma okay, and d gamma. Okay. So, you basically do the spatial average. So, in this case I think this uh, spatial average x will be removed and you can get how it is changing with time. Okay. So, uh, in the experiment you can actually make it more uh, uh, easy 1 by n and this is be sigma right basically u x n. Right. So, uh, in most cases we will be discussing about the Reynolds averaging and we will be deriving the Reynolds average equations, but uh, the ensemble averaging is considered either equal or very close to the Reynolds averaging. So, whatever uh, equation that will be deriving will uh, be applicable for ensemble averaging as well. Okay. Uh, to look at uh, uh, the picture, okay. so if you have a flow like this, we will talk about the two kind of turbulence, uh, two kind of turbulent flow. So, one is the stationary turbulent flow ok. So, let us say this is your mean. So, uh, we had this fluctuations in the beginning and ultimately it becomes stationary ok. So, maybe after this time onward you can see that the fluctuation is around a mean line I mean uh, that it is the mean flow is stationary although the fluctuations are happening ok. And then you can have a fluctuation uh, if you zoom this in you can see that if you if you zoom this part this will be something like uh, this is called this is transient part which is basically when the simulation is developing and this is the statistical stationarity ok. That means, your mean is not changing with time and if you can zoom this in it will look something like this ok. Ok, so this is your u bar and this is your time. So, your u bar is not changing with time. On the other hand let us say your u bar is changing with time ok. So, let us say it never becomes stable ok. So, it is changing with time something like this ok. So, your your mean is also changing with time and fluctuation is also changing with time ok. So, this is your 
u bar and this is t. So, you can see that u bar is also changing with time. So, in this case if you want to really study uh, uh, this phenomena where it is not uh, uh, stationary turbulence, it is non stationary turbulent flow. So, then you have to do either you can use the unsteady approach for example, you can conduct uh, urans okay, where you can see how the u bar is changing with time. Okay. In that case your del u bar by del t will not be equal to 0. Okay. Uh, so, you can uh, I mean uh, the foundation of urans is not uh, very strong I mean compared to let us say LES and DNS okay, because you know we are deriving the equation for RANS and the assumption behind that is uh, that uh, you are doing it for the not average quantity or the time average quantity right. But on the other hand you are talking about del u bar by del t not equal to 0 right. So, uh, once you derive the equation the RANS equation you will see that there is a term which is del u bar by del t equal to 0 this is the first term in the momentum equation right. So, uh, uh, it is assumed that by default that del u bar by del t goes to 0, uh, but you can use an iterative process and make sure that this value becomes so small that now it is a uh, the solution uh, that you uh, want that is stationary solution. But if it does not go to 0, then you can switch to u rans and then you can tell that okay, this is not going to converge it is going to fluctuate uh, keep on fluctuating the mean will also keep on changing. So, you can conduct u rans in those particular cases, but uh, my suggestion is that if you can do alias of this kind of flows. Okay, because uh, LES and DNS they use uh, uh, Navier-Stokes equation instead of Rance equations instead of Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations. So then uh, it is physically more consistent. Okay, but of course uh, you have the equation Rance equation which has got the del by del t term, and you can always do this simulation uh, by not converging that del u bar by del t to zero. Okay. So, now that we have this uh, clear definition between the u bar and u prime okay, this is the mean and this is fluctuations around the mean. Okay. So, you can write it uh, your any quantity or I am writing x and t in terms of basically u bar x plus u prime x and t right u prime will always change in time this is the fluctuation and this is only a function of x here ok. I am talking about rans here ok. So, uh, once you did that uh, we can basically write some relation. So, if you have u equal to u bar plus u prime let us write like that and you take the average on both the sides right take the average of both the sides u bar is equal to u bar of bar plus u prime of bar right this anyway you have taken a mean right. So, u bar is already mean and you are taking another mean of that. So, that will not be nothing but the mean itself because once you put a uh, mean on top of that once you take an average of some quantity it is not changing ok. So, that in time so for all practical purpose here it is like a coefficient that right. you take another mean of that it will result to the same thing right and this will plus u prime bar. So, by definition your u prime bar is equal to u bar minus u bar is equal to 0. So, if you take the average of a fluctuating quantity you will get a 0. You can also see it uh, using this definition. Okay. So, you can uh, uh, define it on both the sides okay. and uh, you can see that if you subtract this u bar x. Uh, minus u you will get this u prime and that will go to 0 if you take the averaging ok. Uh, there are other laws that you should know like for example, if you have u plus v bar ok that will become u bar plus v bar ok or you have like del u by del x ok or any linear operation you can take the averaging part out of the derivative or if you have an integral operation ok u d x and take the averaging of total quantity you can take the integral part out u bar d x ok. So, these these are all allowed ok. Now, what uh, we will see 
that although the the mean of the fluctuation is zero, uh, there are still some effects of the fluctuation remain in our uh, equations. And why is that? Because we have non-linear terms in our equations, right? If you recall your our momentum equation, that is given by let's say del rho u by del t plus del by del x j rho u by u j, okay, minus del p by del x i plus del tau i j by del x j, right? So there is a term which has got uh, which has got non-linearity and it has got some correlation. Right. So, let us do it for like u and v. So, i and g are uh, uh, basically the indices in different uh, directions. So, let us do it for u and v. Rho is a constant because I told initially that you are uh, deriving the equation for the incompressible flow. So, u i u j you can do it for u v and you take the, the u v can be written as u bar plus u prime and v bar plus v prime. Okay. Now, take a average on both the sides, right. So, it will be like u bar v bar plus u prime v bar plus v prime u bar and plus u prime v prime bar, right. So, that will be mean of all the things, right. Now, as we uh, discussed earlier that when you take the mean, it is like a mere a coefficient, okay. So, you can take that out, uh, you, you take the mean it does not matter. So, this is u bar v bar, right. What is this quantity? This is basically u prime bar v bar, right. And similarly, you have v prime bar u bar, because again these are the coefficients which we can take out and plus u prime v prime bar. Now, this will go to 0 because this is u prime bar, this will go to 0, this is because v prime bar. So, ultimately you are left with two quantities u bar v bar plus u prime v prime bar. Okay. So, we say that uh, typically this term v u prime v prime bar does not go to 0 in a turbulent flow. Okay. That means, the fluctuations are correlated. Okay. There are uh, I mean if you talk about uh, uh, you you can have u prime w prime also u prime w prime bar also you can have uh, v prime w prime bar also you can also have like let's say t prime u prime bar okay the temperature fluctuation uh, with the velocity or the pressure fluctuation you can have all different quantity combination density fluctuations okay these correlations are there so typically these correlations are not zero if they are zero then basically they are uncorrelated okay but typically they are not 0 and they can be defined using a correlation coefficient. Okay, you can uh, get this quantity u prime v prime bar, this should be prime I think and you can uh, divide it by this u prime square v prime square bar of square root. Okay, so, your correlation coefficient can be written as let us say u prime v prime bar divided by u prime square bar v prime u prime square bar and v prime square bar okay okay this is just to normalize this u prime v prime bar and uh, as you know that if it is completely correlated this will become 1 okay and if it is not correlated completely not correlated then it will become 0 and you can see it here i mean uh, it, this is a diagram taken from the famous book of Lumley uh, in, in the first course of turbulence. Okay. So, you can see that if you look at the signal A, you can think of it as a u prime, this can be as a v prime okay. and this can be let us say uh, w prime, let us call that w prime. Okay. So, you can see that if it goes down, the u prime goes down, this same v prime also goes down, although it, the both signals are not the same. Okay. When it is going up almost like nearly same time, it is also going up and then it is remaining positive for most of the time when the u prime is remaining positive and then when it is going down this one is also going down. So, it is correlated for most of the time. So, you can say that u prime v prime bar is not equal to 0 that means it is correlated. Okay. On the other hand let us say you try to do u prime w prime bar. 
okay, you multiply this signal with this signal and take an average. Okay, and you will see that uh, basically these are not correlated, they do not follow the uh, similar time stamps where they go down or go up, right. So, then it does not go to 0, okay, so they are basically uncorrelated. Okay. Similarly, V prime W prime this is also uncorrelated. Okay. So, typically the point here is that uh, in most of the uh, turbulent flows, the fluctuations are correlated okay. and that is how you get some additional stress that we will discuss very soon. Okay. Now, let us start deriving the branch equations. Okay. So, we will start with the continuity equation, right. So, the continuity equation will be okay. so you can write del u i by del x i equal to 0 or basically del dot u equal to 0 right for the incompressible flow. So, if you want to write in 3 d del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z is equal to 0. Now, what we will be doing? We will using u is equal to u bar plus u prime v is equal to v bar plus v prime and w equal to w bar plus w prime. Right, let us put it back here u bar plus u prime v bar plus v prime and w bar plus w prime. Okay. And now taken, so we have uh, basically divided our signals into two component which is sig uh, mean plus the fluctuation and we take an average of that. Right. So, the first term del u bar it will become del u by del x because the average can go inside the derivative. You can have one term here del v bar by del y okay. and you can have del w bar by del z okay. and plus the terms that you have is basically del u prime bar by del x plus del v prime bar by del y and plus del w prime bar by del z. Right. So, this all will go to 0. Right. So, this you can write this is basically del u i bar by del x i is equal to 0 or del dot u i u bar equal to 0. Right. Okay. The, I to basically change it. Okay. This is a vector okay, here also because I am using bar for the mean quantity. Right. So, uh, the continuity equation looks like uh, the original equation that we had except that now the instantaneous quantity is replaced by the mean quantity right now look at the momentum equation okay so this is what the equation that we have got okay now go to the momentum equation so momentum equation you can write as okay so it will be let me derive it so del rho u i by del t is equal to del by del x j so, u i u j is equal to minus del p by del x i and plus del tau i j by del x i. I hope you have not forgotten the Navistok equation that we derived earlier. This is a dimensional form, but you can also do for non dimensional form also. Right. So, again we will be doing here. So, we will have basically u i is equal to u i bar plus u i prime. Right. Similarly, will have pressure will be p bar by p prime, okay. And uh, tau, as you know, that uh, tau uh, i j is uh, given by the relation that how the stress is related to the strain rate, right? So, you have something like mu s i j, okay. So, uh, let's try uh, driving it, okay. So, you have uh, so, this will become del rho, rho is a constant. So, we are not taking rho equal to rho bar plus rho prime, okay. rho u i plus u i prime right by del t plus del by del x j. Okay. Now, this is rho u i bar plus u i prime and u j bar plus u j prime. right? 
माइनस डेल पी बाय पी बार प्लस पी प्राइम बाय डेल एक्स आई एंड प्लस डेल टाउ आई जे बार प्लस टाउ आई जे प्राइम बाय डेल एक्स जे राइट एंड विल टेक द एवरेज ऑफ द इंटायर थिंग राइट सो लाइक वी सॉ इन द मोमेंटम इक्वेशन ऑल द क्वांटिटी वी सर लाइक डेरिवेटिव ऑफ समथिंग लाइक आई टी और एक्स और वाट एवर इट इज इफ यू हैव दिस यू यू आई प्राइम बार ओके और यू जे प्राइम बार ऑल दोज थिंग्स विल गो टू जीरो राइट सिमिल बिकॉज टाव आई जे डिपेंड्स ऑन द वेलोस्टिक रेडियंट राइट सो बिकॉज द वेलोस्टिक रेडियंट ऑल्सो हैज दिस टर्म सो वेलोस्टिक इफ यू लाइक डेल यू आई बेडेल एक्स जे राइट दिस इज हाउ द स्टाव आई जी इज रिलेटेड टू राइट सो दैट विल बिकम डेल यू आई प्राइम प्लस यू आई बार ओके बाई डेल एक्स जे एंड देन यू टेक एन एवरेज ऑफ दैट सो दिस दिस टर्म विल ऑल्सो गो टू जीरो राइट सो यू कैन रिमूव ऑल द टर्म्स विच आर गोइंग टू जीरो डायरेक्टली सो दिस विल गो टू जीरो ओके दिस इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड दिस विल गो टू जीरो फ्लक्चुएशन दिस विल गो टू जीरो here uh, if you recall we have done this uh, uh, if you have like the row you have u and v u v bar is equal to u bar v bar plus u prime v prime bar right so same thing can be applied directly here and you will have equation which is del rho u bar ui by del t plus del by del x j okay u i u j bar minus u i prime u j prime bar right plus u i prime u j prime bar okay is equal to minus del p bar by del x i and plus del r tau i j bar by del x j right uh, you can write it in terms of del rho u i you can take this term on the right hand side okay and put it here del rho u i bar by del t is equal to del by del x j u i u j is equal to minus del p by del x i plus del by del x j tau i j bar minus There will be row also here, okay? Because taken the row also, so row u i j, so row u i prime u j prime, right? So this is the Ryan's equation that I was talking. Okay. Now you can compare it with the Navier-Stokes equations, and the form looks very similar, uh, except that we have uh, the bar quant, we have the now the bar quantity instead of the instantaneous quantities. But there is one major difference, which is this one. Okay, you have an additional term coming in your momentum equation. Okay, and it will come uh, because I have written in the tensor will quantity. Uh, it will uh, come in all the three equations, right? X momentum, Y momentum, Z momentum. And this is this term is the biggest problem in turbulence. okay because i mean all other quantities you can you have like let's say if you're doing the incompressible flow the flow variables that you're looking for basically u v w and p right and you have one continuity okay and three momentum equation if the laminar you can solve it directly but when it is turbulent you have this quantity which is rho u prime v prime uh, bar okay and then you will have row u prime u prime bar and so on and so forth right so how many quantities that we have that uh, we don't know apart from the uh, the flow variable mean flow variables is basically you have if you expand this minus row u i prime u j prime bar it will become minus row u prime square Minus to u prime v prime, minus to u prime w prime, right? It's now a tensor, 
right this is minus rho u prime v prime okay this is symmetric you can see these are symmetric terms minus rho v prime r square minus rho v prime w prime bar okay none of them is is non zero this will be again minus rho u prime w prime bar minus rho v prime w prime bar minus rho w prime bar square okay so uh, these two are symmetric this and this is symmetric okay and similarly you have these two are symmetric right so how many independent stress quantities you have or so this term is called the reynolds stress okay and we will see how it is related to the stress that we get okay this is not actually the stress but it is like stress okay or it you can call it tau i j r right so it uh, it has at least six independent quantities which we do not know right 1 2 3 4 okay so this three of this and then u prime v prime okay no let me count that okay this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay these are basically the quantity which are symmetric right so have six stress quantities which are unknown okay and there is no separate equations for them okay we have only those equations we have the continuity equation uh, for the mean flow we have the three momentum equation for the mean flow and there is no separate equation for these six stress quantities okay so that this leads to a problem which is called the closure problem this is a famous closure problem why because we don't know these quantities we have more unknowns than the equations and let's say if you want to derive a quantity of for let's say u prime v prime okay so let's say you want to uh, derive a dynamical equation for u prime v prime bar okay let's say del by del t of rho u prime v prime bar if you want to derive you will quickly see like uh, we saw here that when we tried deriving this uh, uh, u i u j you got u prime v prime bar similarly if you try deriving this u prime v prime bar equations you will get the equation which is like triple correlation it can be u prime v prime bar u w prime bar or u prime v prime v prime bar u prime u prime v prime bar and so on and so forth right so you will have triple correlations again these are unknowns okay you can delay it you can uh, but ultimately you will have to have unknowns which needs to be modeled right unless you model it you cannot solve these equations that you have and this term plays a very very important role because this is the turbulent stress that we are talking about when we are talking about the turbulent modular earlier yeah, remember we had this uh, viscous sub layer and then we had the log layer okay in the log layer we said that the turbulence stress is more dominant right so this is the stress that we are talking about let us take a very simple example okay so yeah this we have already discussed uh, last one point before I go to the example you can take the trace of this uh, tensor okay so if you can see this is rho u prime r square minus rho v prime bar square trace is basically summing all the terms in the diagonal okay. okay and this is basically nothing but 2 rho k right this will be minus 2 rho k if you are doing it this way right why because that k is what is k k is called the turbulence kinetic energy Turbulence kinetic energy, which is given by half u prime square plus v prime square plus w prime square. Okay. So uh, these terms, this uh, u prime v prime bar, okay, minus rho u prime w prime bar, minus rho v prime w prime bar. Okay, these are called the shear stresses. and the terms which are on the diagonal which contributes to turbulence kinetic energy 
they are called the normal stresses. Okay, these are the normal stresses. Right. So, uh, we have these six quantities that we want to find out a equation or basically find out a way how to model these terms. Right. Now, look at uh, this term. Okay, let me discuss it here. Okay. So, if you have let us say this is your uh, bondy layer, typical bondy layer, let us say this is your u bar okay. and uh, very close to the wall you have the viscous sub layer and after that you will have the turbulent stress dominating. Right. So, your if it is a 1D flow, okay, uh, 1D shear flow, you can write your total stress is equal to tau viscous and plus tau turbulent, right, which is this will be given by mu del u by del y okay, and this will be given by minus rho u prime b prime bar. Right. So, this why it is called the turbulent stress. So, let us look at the behavior. Okay, Let us say we have a uh, we have a phase here towards which the flux is happening. Okay, uh, there is some flux. If there is a mass flux, okay, so then it will be like uh, uh, rho v and a, right? So this is density multiplied by the volume. This is mass flux, and if it is uh, uh, basically the mean flow, you can do rho v bar a, right? If you go to the momentum flux now. So, let us say if you have a velocity in this direction, this is u, this is that. right. So, the momentum flux will be given by rho v a into u, right. If there were no fluctuations or you can rearrange it which is clearly rho u v and a, right. But if you have the fluctuations, this will become rho u bar v bar a and plus rho u prime v prime bar into a right. So, this is your momentum transport okay, due to the mean flow and this is the momentum transport due to the due to the fluctuations right. So, in a way you can see that this is uh, the fluctuations are basically doing the transport and in a way it is contributing to the stress. Okay. Uh, if you want to understand it little bit more, what you can do? You can probably take two layers here okay, and you can take the fluid particle on the top layer and the bottom layer okay, and uh, it let us say it has the velocity, the, the fluctuations has like uh, velocity u prime and v prime and when it jumps there, okay, let us say this was so, uh, your v prime increased okay, and u prime decreased right. So, it will become u prime v prime is negative because in this case uh, your v prime increased u prime increased and the v prime decreased. Similarly, if a molecule jump from the top layer to the bottom layer okay, then it will have this uh, uh, u prime decreasing and v prime increasing. Okay, so, because the momentum has to remain constant, so right. So, if one is increasing the other has to decrease. So, then the relation this is u prime v prime bar remains negative. Okay, so, that is why this minus rho prime you represent the flux in minus term. So, you have this minus rho u prime v prime bar because this is a generally a positive term. Okay, that is also a realizability condition that all the terms in the diagonal should remain the positive. Okay. So, this is uh, basically the when the molecule jumps from the top layer to the bottom layer and they keep on jumping in the turbulent flow anyway or from the bottom layer to the top layer they transport some momentum okay. and that basically uh, introduce a stress okay, uh, in the system and that is given as the turbulent stress or the Reynolds stress. Okay. In general these fluctuations uh, I mean these stresses the normal stresses 
are uh, uh, basically not isotropic, so they are not equal. Okay, uh, there is no closed form solution that we talked. Okay, and this is called a closure problem. Okay, now this needs to be modeled. Okay, so uh, we will talk about the two ways to model it. One is the Bojanas hypothesis, where we relate these stresses to the mean flow gradients. Okay, like uh, the way you, if you recall, your uh, viscous stress tau do is equal to mu del u by del y, right? Can we have something for the uh, Reynolds stress also? Minus rho u prime v prime bar is equal to, let's say, instead of mu, you can call it mu t, which is a kind of turbulent viscosity. Remember, this is not a fluid property; this is a flow property. Okay, and del u by del y. So, if you can relate that, we already know the gradient from uh, the solution of our equations. If you can somehow find out this mu t or model this mu t, we can find out all the stresses. Okay, very similar to how do you we do the stresses uh, uh, tau i j right here. And the other is that you can uh, get the dynamical equations for the stresses themselves okay, and solve the transport equations as I told that uh, you can have the equation which is del by del t rho u prime v prime bar similarly rho u prime bar square you need to have six equations six transport equations then also you will have terms which needs to be modeled which are the triple correlations okay so uh, there are two schools of thoughts one is the eddy viscosity model where we get a viscosity equivalent to the molecular viscosity okay and other is you basically solve the Reynolds stress equations directly derive the equation for the Reynolds stresses so uh, this is uh, all I have for the class today, what we will do in the next class is uh, we will uh, look at the compressible flow equations okay, and we will see that uh, there are more terms which are appearing in the compressible lens equations okay, compared to the incompressible lens okay. and we will uh, get into more detail of this models, eddy viscosity model and the Reynolds stress transport model uh, in the next few classes and then ultimately we will look at the some of the popular turbulence models and the transitional models. Thank you very much.